In today's lesson, you will see a match versus a 12 ball ghost. Of course, I will show you where I'm hitting the cue ball on each shot, and I will also explain what I'm doing on the table so that you guys can learn something from this match. Okay, let's have a real quick look at the rules. 12 ball ghost, that means 12 balls on the table. I have to break, then get ball in hand and have to run the balls in order from 1 to 12 with 9 ball rules. If I miss a ball, the ghost gets 1 point and if I run out, I get 1 point. We are playing a race to 7. And to spice and then fasten things up, I play with a 30 second shot clock and 1 extension per rack. And now let's start. I'm racking like in 10 ball, but with 2 balls at the back of the rack so that I have 12 balls on the table. 3 balls dropped and obviously you want to make as many balls as possible on the break because less balls on the table means less clusters and also you have more space for the cue ball to travel. And this was a horrible first shot, the first shot of the match and I get straight and also the point of the side pocket got a little into the way so I really have to play a very small curve shot and um, I managed to get out of the situation and can continue my run. The 4 ball doesn't pass the 7 ball, that's why I had to choose the other corner pocket. And here I have actually the perfect angle, but look at my stroke, I'm not powering the ball here, I'm playing really soft, um, follow through, make sure um, that I hit the right point on the cue ball with my tip and that's the most important thing, because power doesn't mean um, a lot of rotation, it's the quality of your stroke. Here I'm having the wrong angle, that's why I had to switch hands and had to play that horrible shot again. It was really difficult, but I got the perfect position here on the 8 ball and um, with some outside spin, the cue ball fastens up from the two rails. Um, I got a little too short, a little further would have been perfect, so now I have to go that long way with the cue ball. Um, I end up frozen to the rail, but this is actually the perfect angle, not straight, a small angle, and um, yeah, that's the first game for me. The average shot time, 4.7 seconds, that's really, really fast, and um, I wouldn't recommend to play that fast, and that's also not my rhythm. Um, I'm just playing that fast um, in this video because I don't want to take this video um, forever, that's why I am. Um, yeah, playing a little faster here, but um, play your own rhythm, take your time if you're a slow player, um, play fast if you're a fast player, just um, yeah, stay to your rhythm. Okay, here 1, 2 and 3 are again close to each other, and here it's very important to plan 3 shots ahead, because I want to have a nice angle on the 2 to get a nice angle on the 3. So here I have that angle that the cue ball can go towards the short rail and that I have the angle where the cue ball is going away from the 5 ball. Because would I have had the other angle where the cue ball would travel into the 5 ball, it would almost be impossible to get on the 4 ball from there unless you're after and race maybe. So yeah, it's really important to get that right angle and to know that right angle you have to plan 3 shots ahead. This was a horrible shot, um, obviously I uh, wanted to be on the other side of the 5 ball, but I hit way too low, and um, you see I'm a little annoyed, but yeah, that's just pool, that's the game, sometimes you make mistakes, and if you get away with it, then just accept it, yeah, don't struggle with yourself, recollect, and try to continue your run, try to play your rhythm, um, and don't think about that mistake anymore. Here just bumping into the 8 ball, um, here I have that angle where I have to draw back for the 8 into the side pocket. And here I got the wrong angle and look how important the right angle is. Would I have been above the 8 ball, it would have been so easy to get onto the 9 and the 10 ball. And look what I had to do, I almost scratched and that's just because I had that wrong angle, so you see how important that is. And again, I have a difficult shot on the 9 ball, um, caused by that wrong angle, again, a little too slow, a very tough shot on the 10 ball, 
um, luckily the keyboard will travel naturally um, down table with the, the free rails but I hit way too soft and have a tough shot on the 12 ball if you're in training this ball of course is very makeable but if you're in a match um, it's a total different story because the pressure is just so high and I'm sure every one of you knows um, the difference of um, playing in training and playing a match and I think you can relate to that so we want to make it as easy as possible so far the rack was breaking really well but this time we got two problems the first problem is the three and the seven ball um, I maybe can play that combination shot or the three ball would even pass into the upper left corner pocket but um, the next problem is the four ball because the four ball doesn't pass the eight and the twelve ball so I have to play a combination shot and that's why I'm taking my time on this first shot because um, the one ball is already the shot where I decide what I want to do with the three ball because um, I want to get the right angle on the two ball to get nicely on the three ball so I have to know do I want to play the combination or do I want to play the free ball up table and I'm deciding here to play the combination shot okay obviously the best position for the cue ball would be where the cue ball is right now because um, if I'm playing that combination the free ball will travel into the long rail and I want to have an angle where after hitting the free ball the cue ball will also travel into the wrong rail um, I didn't manage to do that here I um, have an off angle combination but um, if you're playing a combination you want to make sure that the object ball that you're hitting into the other object ball and the cue ball are going into the same direction and that makes it a lot easier for you to get position on that object ball after the combination um, I somehow managed to get position here, but as you see, it's not the perfect position. Um, I, the only thing I can do here is um, play the free ball into the upper left corner pocket and bump the cue ball into the 11 ball. I did this and have um, a bank shot on the four ball. Um, I'm a little hampered by the 10 ball but it's still a makeable bank shot and this basically is the match winner if I can make this ball with position I win the match but I missed it by half a diamond and that's why I'm so annoyed here because this was the last difficult shot on this rack but as I said don't think about the mistakes you yeah, forget the mistakes in the match while you're playing the match afterwards of course you can think about your mistakes um, why you didn't run out but during the match you don't want to think about that and this again is a really nice looking table there are no clusters on the table every ball goes into its um, closest pocket so I don't have to play a ball long so it's the perfect rack um, what I'm thinking here is what I want to do with the one and the six ball and I'm deciding here to play that one six combination and usually I wouldn't recommend that but my thought process here is um, I have to go from the 3 to the 6 to the 7 and um, for me it's easier if I remove that 6 ball you see now I just have to go from the 3 to the 7 and for me that looks a lot easier and that's why I decided to remove that 6 ball here by playing that combination I have an angle but not enough so I have to um, stun follow that ball that means hitting a little above center hitting harder so that the cue ball is on the tangent line a little longer and then follows and here you see from the 3 to the 7 how easy that was yeah it's just um, a lot easier without the 6 ball that's why I played that combination shot here just drawing a little bag into the rail um, I overdid this a little bit but still a very makeable shot and here I'm playing the 8 ball with a touch of outside spin um, I don't recommend to play balls with spin but for me I'm just feeling more comfortable um, by playing some shots with a bit of outside spin to compensate for cut and use throw but as I said I wouldn't recommend to do that um, play balls without spin if it's not necessary
And here I had um, the perfect angle on the 10 ball to go one rail to the 12 ball. And now it's three to one in favor of me. Shot success 97% so far. That's because um, I just missed that one bank shot on the four so far. And again, some balls dropped and um, this basically is the easiest drag you can have. Look at the balls. The one leads perfectly to the two with a stop shot. The two, again with a stop shot, leads perfectly to the five ball. The five ball leads perfectly to the six ball because the balls are so close to each other. So I don't have to move the cue ball a lot. And even the six ball leads perfectly to the seven ball. So. That's probably the easiest drag you can wish for in playing the 12 ball ghost. But see what happens here. I have the wrong angle on the 6 ball. And suddenly the so easy rack becomes a lot more difficult. I have to go up table, I have to hit hard. Um, I didn't miss the 8 ball to get position for the 7 in the side. And now I have this horrible shot. And now you see how such an easy rack can become so difficult. Yeah, I made the 7 ball and I have a nice position on the 8, but it was a lot tougher than it should have been. Just because of that small wrong angle where I was careless um, from getting to the 5 to the 6 ball and that was the problem. But luckily I solved this problem and I made the 12 ball and it's now 4 to 1. Yeah, if you want to become one of my students, check out my Patreon page. Um, there are some drills, bonus videos, um, there's the playing ability test. Um, you can upload videos and I will rate your game and give you my opinion and my feedback on your game. So if you're interested in that, um, consider to check that out. The link is in the description. Here I made two balls on the break and um, so 10 balls on the table and luckily every ball has its own pocket. The two ball, it's very important, passes into the side pocket. Here I want to be around the center of the table for the free ball. Um, having enough angle on the free ball, I don't want to be straight. Um, yeah, I overdrew that ball a little bit, but I still have that angle. I can't work with a rolling cue ball here, so um, I have to stun it into the rail and out. And as you saw, um, this cost me to get the wrong angle on the four ball. And again, um, if I would have been straight, just draw the cue ball a little back. But now with that wrong angle, I have to go up table and um, the problem here is by going up table I couldn't manage to get the cue ball closer to the 5. It uh, would have been possible of course yeah but um, yeah I just misjudged it. So now I have that long shot just because I had the wrong angle. Here on the 6 ball it didn't matter either straight or on the other or other side of the cue ball so it um, didn't matter. There are some balls where it's not important. But here on the 7 for example it was important that I have an angle. The exact angle didn't matter but I didn't want to be straight. And uh, being straight is also a huge huge um, problem area. Because um, if you're straight on a ball you can't do a lot with the cue ball. So you always want to have an angle. Um, yeah except if you just have to play a stop shot for the next ball or if you're on the last ball. But um, having an angle is very important. Here I'm using the principle of going towards the line. You see the left spin grab on the rail and the cue ball goes into the shooting line of the 12 into the corner pocket. Um, you always want to go or very often want to go towards the line. Um, but you probably know that principle from my video um, everything you must know about positional play. Okay, it's 5-1 now. I'm playing really well. Um, so far only did one mistake, so um, I'm really happy so far with the result and um, let's see how this turns out. Again, a very nice um, table, there, yeah, a small problem, probably is the 9 and the 12 ball you see. Um, but the 9 ball does pass into the corner pocket. So um, here, again, I'm using the principle of going towards the line. You see, I'm drawing the cue ball here. And I want to draw the cue ball in a way where the cue ball, as you see, travels towards the two ball. 
so um, I have a lot of margin for error regarding speed control. You so you're always looking for going towards the line. Here on the free ball, I crossed that line. I overdrew a little bit, um, but sometimes, yeah, you have no choice. Um, so it's very important that you work on your speed control to draw the cue ball precisely, to follow the cue ball precisely to a point. Um, that's very important. Here I'm having the wrong angle, but that doesn't matter a lot because um, look where the seven ball is. So I basically have to get them um, towards the center of the table again um, to get position four to seven to get down table for the nine ball. And here what I have to do is to play the seven ball really thick into the corner pocket. That means into the right part, then follow the cue ball and even add a, lot, a touch of left hand English. But as you see here, I made two mistakes. Mistake A was um, I didn't hit thick enough into the pocket and mistake B was I powered that shot. I didn't play that shot with quality but with power. Um, if I would have hidden softer with more quality, yeah the key ball would have been um, a little more to the left and I would have had a shot on a nine ball. So again, power doesn't mean quality and rotation on the cue ball. Um, it's how well you hit that contact point on the cue ball, how well you follow through. So um, don't power the shots, try to find um, a really smooth stroke. And um, yeah, that mistake cost me the rack and um, now it's five to two. The average game length, um, about two minutes. And um, yeah, as you see, that's, that's really fast. Um, the average shot time went up to nine seconds. Um, still really, really fast. But as I said, um, yeah, don't play that fast. Okay, a nice looking rack. Um, the only thing as you hear is um, the six and the five ball. And um, you want to check that at the beginning of the rack. Of course, you're just thinking three shots ahead. But after breaking, you want to have a rough overview of the rack. If there are any problems, um, if there are any clusters, if there are any um, special position shots where a ball doesn't pass, where you get short side position and stuff like that. So you want to have to check that. And I saw here that the five ball does pass, so no problem. Now the three ball gets me positioned for the five ball. I checked if the five ball passes into the upper right corner pocket because if I have the wrong angle on the four ball, I always have a plan B. I am not having the wrong angle here. I have no angle at all. So um, worst case scenario, I have to draw the ball back with a touch of left hand English that the cue ball goes a little more up table. I overpowered the shot a little bit but I still can make the five ball and that's the most important shot. Here I'm just using the tangent line. You see the cue ball travel along the tangent line. From here I will always have a shot. Now if the cue ball would have traveled a little further, I could have played the six ball into the upper corner pocket, a little further into the upper right corner pocket. So um, this was um, the perfect line for going into multiple positions. But you probably know that principle as well from one of my videos. Here I'm using that principle of going towards the line again. And as you see here, I'm playing that ball with high right. And um, that's actually a really interesting shot with that high right. Um, you could have played it a little lower without English. But for me, playing this with high and right is just way more controllable. You should definitely give that shot a try. As you see here, I made 2.6 balls on the break on average and um, that's really important. You want to make as many balls as possible, as I said, um, to make things really easy. And here, the 6 ball and the 10 ball got really dangerous, um, but the 6 ball does pass. So again, um, yeah, I'm having a really nice looking rack, 10 balls on the table. And again, look what I'm doing here from the 1 to the 2. I'm again going towards the line, playing the ball with low left into the wrong rail and look at the path of the cue ball. It travels exactly along the line that I want to have to the two ball. Here just a small follow shot, follow the cue ball, go into the rail, um, get straight or a little above the free ball, doesn't matter um, because the four is right in front of the side pocket. 
I'm deciding here to draw into the rail and out because I want to be a lot closer to the four ball and that's also a really important thing that you're close to the next ball because um, being close makes it easier to get position again um, if you're far away it's a lot tougher to control the cue ball than if you're close to the ball and here you see I would have loved to be in, um, at the center of the table um, I'm a little further away have um, a lot of angle and you see I played the shot really soft with quality with low right and yeah I got perfect position this was the match winner um, I just have to roll the six ball in the six ball leads perfectly to the seven ball seven ball leads perfectly to the ten ball the only thing I want to make sure here is um, that I have again an angle on the ten ball that's why I played it a little harder um, I have a perfect angle, can go into the short rail and out with high right. Um, I want to be a little further away from the F11 ball. Uh, Makes speed control a little easier if you're further away from the balls. And yeah, that should be the wreck. And that should be the 7-2 win against the Ghost in 12th ball. And that's really amazing for me. Um, I'm really happy with this result. You see the whole match only took 20 minutes and um, the average game length was 2 minutes. My shot time at the end um, of these 9 wrecks is um, 9.3 seconds which is still really really fast. And um, as you see 2.5 balls on the break which was really important in this match. Um, I pocketed a total of 77 balls. The balls on the break of course don't count and um, I missed a total of 2 balls. That means a shot success or a pot success of 97.5% and yeah that's um, for me an amazing result. Well this was my match against the 12 ball ghost. If you enjoyed watching this match um, and if you want to see me play against the 13 ball ghost um, leave me a comment and give this video a thumbs up and um, I hope you've learned something new. I hope you enjoyed this video and um, thanks for watching guys and as always see you at the next lesson. Take care.